some hunting turkeys. I got my weapon. I'm flodged up. This probably ain't gonna work, but stick around. I got something that will. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Hey folks, as you can see, the leaves is off the tree, fall is in the air, and turkey time's right around the corner. And I do love me some turkey time. And I'm just going to start today with about a six and a half pound turkey breast. Thawed out. I got a stick of butter that is pretty well softened. But I got to get this up under this skin. So to do that, we got to get that skin to where it's loose enough that we can get it up in there. Because if we just put it there on top, hey, it's just going to run off everywhere. Just remember not to tear the skin. Just take the wooden end of that spoon or wagon bow if you got one and just try to run him down in there to where you can get all this to get seasoned really well here in a minute. Red River Ranch Smoky Dip. Now if you ain't got this, you can use some of that Lipton soup mix. You can use Italian dressing, whatever you got on hand. So I'm gonna take this whole package, put in here, and then I'm gonna go to mashing that butter all around with my fingers. Now you could do this in the beater at the house if you got one of them fancy mixing bowls to get it all started up in there. But since how we ain't got no electricity out here in the elements, we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. Now, right at the tail end of this, I'd like to add me just a little olive oil to give this a little more liquid consistency. How much? That much. I'd say it was about a tablespoon. There's some sage here. You could go out there and pick you some of your own if you got some in the garden. So we just put a teaspoon of sage in, because you can't have turkey if you ain't got some sage. We got to get this herby butter in that turkey skin. You just want to make sure that you get this evenly distributed inside that old turkey's little skin there. You may have to mash him around to get him up there at the front, but make sure you get it all in there and he's got some of it all over him. If you was cooking this in a conventional oven in the house, you'd set him in one of them roasting pans. Whew. You'd set him on one of them in them roasting pans, but you'd have one of them deals that he set up off the bottom. I ain't got one. What go good with turkey? I'm gonna put some down there that he's got a bumper on. That's called an apple. Cause you don't want him to set right there on the bottom. If this was an old chuck roast, I'd be using some onions or something like that to set him on. I love to use a Granny Smith apple cause he'll stand up a little better to all this punishment this turkey and this Dutch oven gonna give him. Four slices of hog meat. Good bacon. Just lay him across there to where you be sure that that turkey's going to get some, some bacon love when he's sitting in there. As we say when we're turkey hunting, that turkey fitting to go to roost right there in that Dutch oven. So we're going to grease him up here on the outside a little with just some olive oil. Make sure you get him coated well everywhere. All right, we got that old bird greased up, so it's time to get him seasoned some more on the outside. What are we using? Red River Ranch Original. Now you want to make sure you got him coated all the way around everywhere. This turkey going to be pretty thick in this 14 inch oven. So right there where that breastbone been split, just lay him out here a little more. Give him a little pull to where he's going to set down there a little better in the bottom of this Dutch oven. Now you can see if we had left him the other way, whew, he'd have been trying to jump the lid right off there. He would have. Come so he got to have a little juice in there to keep him going. So we got some chicken broth. I don't want to pour it directly on the turkey because I'll be knocking some of my seasoning off. About an inch and a half deep in here, inch and a quarter. And he'll have a lid on him so he's going to sit there and steam. But the worst thing that can happen is he could boil dry. And we ain't going to let that happen. We need a little bit more of that sage just sprinkled around right over that old bird. Can I go to Bertha, Shan? Oh yeah, you can see old Bertha done her job on that herby butter she did. I had a little bit of that herb butter left over that we mixed up that Red River Ranch Smoky Dip and some butter. We sure don't want to waste it none. 
So let's just let him just fall in there where he might. Guess what? Tell him. Can y'all y'all want to tell him before I do? Night night. You've seen a lot of my videos where I cook something, bake something, fried something, grilled something. This folks is gonna be a little different, so stick around. It's finna happen. Yeah, it's heavy. You gonna follow me? Folks, I'm finna cook this here turkey in the ground, bake him slow. If I try to cook him with just coals underneath and coals on top, that turkey gonna try to burn and it would take a whole lot more wood. When you're baking something and you wanna try to control heat for a long period of time, what you do, grab you one of these PhDs here. I got a good degree in this called post hole digger. We're gonna go about six inch deep on the bottom with coals, put the oven in there. Then we're gonna go about six inches of coals on top. And that little red deal that's on them turkey sacks when you're cooking will pop right out and he'll say, gobble, gobble, it's done. Really, it won't, but it'll be about three hours. Hang on. That's about a 20 inch hole, folks, if you're guessing on my measuring apparatus, which is my knee. It's about this much bigger all the way around in a circle than that 14 inch oven. Folks, I had to transfer these from Bertha to this here hole. You're probably wondering why I'm going so far from camp. Well, this is uphill from camp. Water table is high down here at camp. Here we go. We're going to dump these coals right in the bottom. Because this old ground was good and wet. And we done put about that many coals down in there. Now, we're going to let them set about 10 minutes. Let that ground get good and dry. This old clay will start to sort of bake a little and it'll seal up. We're going to go back to Bertha and get us another tub full. We're going to put this in the ground. we got to have something to cover this to where we don't get any accidental dirt in there. We're going to add a little more heat. we got about six inches deep worth of coals in this hole. Now we got her get her back level. The secret to good hole in the ground cooking is make sure you get everything sealed so you're keeping that heat inside. It's a lower temperature because it ain't getting no oxygen. Now we got him on top this oven need to cook all the way around, so make sure you get them edges covered also. Big, that's hot, buddy. I know you like Thanksgiving, but if I was you, I'd wait a little bit. All right. I'd say the hole was nearly there. Guess what? We are baking a turkey at what temperature? Hell if I know, but it's hot. <laughs> We gotta line some foil on top of them coals so that old wet dirt just don't choke it to death. So, and this is really good if you can do it when the wind ain't blowing 60 mile an hour, which is highly unusual that you would find that in Oklahoma today. Make sure you get them edges sealed because we want to keep all that heat in there. If you can see smoke coming out of it somewhere, it ain't sealed good. This ground being that wet and cold, I'm gonna go over to Bertha and get one more shovel full. Just lay it right there on top. If the ground wasn't wet and cold, you wouldn't have to do that last step. Because we got him sealed up good. Ain't no heat getting out nowhere. But seeing as how this is wet, cold dirt, I'm gonna give me one more little insurance plan. The last of it, right there on top. Just in case the wind get up, I'm gonna put me a little fire barrier around here. Gobble, gobble, gobble. He's in the hole. We're gonna to try to let him go about three hours pretty close to it. Then we'll pull that old bird out there and we'll see what's happening. 
Well, it has been three hours and 22 minutes since the turkey crawled in a hole and buried itself. I'm thinking about an hour for two pounds. This was a six and a half pound bird. So we're gonna to try to get some of this out of here to where we can get to that tenfold. See a Dutch oven. Could be one Coronado left in here many years ago. I just hope, hope he left the turkey in there. Well, all the pilgrims is gathered at the wagon, so let's go see what's happening. I think somebody come got the turkey and put a possum in there instead. But make sure when you take this foil off, because there's always going to be a little ash in here somewhere, make sure you keep going to one side to where you don't get none of that back in there. Okay, you need to be at least 165 or over. He is a little more than that, but we're right again that breastbone. So I'm calling this bird dead and done. Let that juice drain off of him. We had Herb and all his friends in that butter. We're gonna slice down in here. Oh, that looks good. But you can still see he got lots of good juice in him. He is tender, falling apart. The beagle says it meets his approval. <laughs> Now, if we would have tried to cook him in a conventional Dutch oven just over here with coals underneath and coals on top, we'd have had to start out with a little bit of heat and just kept it going forever and ever. Or you would have burnt something if you would have put too many on top. When you can bury something and you got about six inches of them good mesquite coals down there on the bottom, set him down in there, coals around the outside edge all the way to the top, fold him over there, lid on, coals back on top about four inches. You have just made a clay oven really is what it was and that meat will cook slow it will always cook tender remember it's about about an hour per two pounds on a bird like this so all these folks that's joining me now are pilgrims that come over on the dodge pickup in the mayflower here at cooking school so i'm gonna let them sample this turkey is it fit to eat yes very good help yourself no, it seems great. It is. I'm not much of a turkey person. That's really good. So, Doug, what do you think, brother? It'll pass. It'll pass. <laughs> if you eat enough of it, it will. You know what I mean? It will. Make sure you season it just like we told you. Lift that skin up. Get that herb and that butter down in there. Season him well. It'll keep him really moist, and that's what we're after. Ain't nothing worse than a dry turkey, even a wild turkey bottle when it gets dry and good, I promise you. So I hope you've enjoyed something. Hope you've learned something. The channel have the little link in the description below. Thank you. We hope you have the happiest of Thanksgiving we do. And from mine and Shannon Camps to y'all's, God bless you and hope you have a good time. Hey, come on, we're going turkey hunting. Come on, I need a turkey dog. Come on. I need a turkey dog. And then give me a gobble gobble. <laughs> I'm going to get me a turkey is what I'm going to do.